Our brains are amazing. We're all aware of this. It's a piece of us that controls our mind, body, and emotions. It stores years of memories and knowledge which are all easily accessible to us. The brain enables us to think, have an internal monologue, and even deal with choices. But what makes our brains act like brains? Do our personalities really exist? In this book, the author applies neurological research to answer these questions. It sheds light on what makes the brain work and how it actually works. Here are the top seven lessons from the brain by David Eagleman. Lesson one, reforming connections. Once we grow older, reunions are bound to happen. Whether it be with our high school or college friends, we always notice a thing or two that changed about them. It may be about the way they talk or maybe their strides. Even the person we were two years ago is a different person from who we are now. We may prefer different clothes, food, and have a changed attitude about life. But why and how does this happen? Well, it's because of the changing connections in our brains. Our brain's synapses are the connectors which transmit information. These change as we age and may even lose connections if they aren't continually strengthened by repetition. This plasticity exhibited by our brains is even greater seen in children, since their synapses are new and adaptable. Adult brains can still learn new tricks, we just need more repetitions to get the hang of them. Lesson 2. Make the reality. Reality is what we try to fall back into whenever we start feeling a little crazy. It's where we try to snap ourselves into when we find ourselves daydreaming during meetings. Surely reality is objective and consistent. Well, the book states otherwise. Our own sense of reality is actually based on our brain's interpretation of the sensory data it absorbs. This is why optical illusions are so interesting. We've all seen the one where the picture can look like either a rabbit or a duck. This is a brilliant example of how the brain can easily change its outlook about reality. To explain this, the brain doesn't form reality based on logic alone. It gets information from our sensory organs and then molds reality based on our sight, taste, and smell. Lesson 3. Deciding on Decisions We've become so accustomed to how our brain works that sometimes we forget to marvel at how easy it makes our lives. In a day, how many decisions do you think you make? Probably hundreds or even thousands. From waking up in the morning and deciding which foot to use for the first step, the choice of drink in the morning, and even when to brush your teeth. These are all decisions subconsciously made by our brains for us. Imagine if we had to think of everything we had to do. Simply making coffee would be so difficult and draining. However, let's not be alarmed that we can easily work on autopilot. This doesn't really mean that we're lazy. We should interpret it as our brains being so well trained that it doesn't need to consciously engage in everything we do. This is how dancers move to the beat instantly, even without thinking, or how basketball players are continuously able to dribble the ball. Our brains make most decisions for us. Well, the day-to-day -day ones. The hard ones are still up to us. Lesson 4. Desiring Instant Gratification Since we already know that our brains make subconscious choices, it's also important to be aware of what influences our conscious decision-making process. Our brains and bodies work hand-in-hand. -hand. Whenever our mouth feels a little dry, that's the brain deciding to tell our body that it's thirsty. But when presented with choices, our brains also depend on different sensory and emotional associations. For example, you are choosing between drinking black coffee for your diet or giving yourself a treat through drinking a frappuccino. If you choose the latter, your brain releases dopamine, which gives off that pleasurable sensation and will be factored into your decision-making the next time. Lesson 5. Tricking Our Brains Although our brains are thinking machines, we can still trick it into thinking that there are no other options anymore. Since we've recently learned that our brains base its decisions, subconsciously or consciously, on various sensory and emotional associations, we could just give it up and let it make all the decisions for us. However, if we keep letting our brains do that, we might become spoiled brats who can't say no to ourselves. Instead, we can trick our minds and push ourselves into making the right choice, even if it makes us sad. One way to do this is by locking ourselves out of our temptations. We can set foolproof fail-safes that would help us stick to our commitments and stay consistent. For example, if you need to study for an exam and can't stay focused, you can download an app that locks your phone for a few hours to help you study. You could also look for an accountability partner if you'd like to hit the gym or go on a diet. Our brains are very powerful, but we do still own them. Lesson 6. Feeling and Showing Emotions Humans are very social animals, hence our love for social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Even our brain activity reflects our desire for human connection. We usually want to connect and understand others through empathy. Normally, we'd define empathy as feeling for another person and putting oneself in another person's shoes. But in a neurological perspective, empathy is what we call mirroring. Basically, this is when we reflect a person's facial expressions and feel what they are thinking and feeling too. This just shows that our brains are hardwired to feel emotions for others when they also show their own feelings. Lesson 7. Replacing our brains with technology is impossible. In an age where technological advances are unprecedented, a lot of people start fearing that robots may replace humans in the future. 
There's this underlying fear that technology may deem humans obsolete someday. Although it may be possible for humans to be fused with technology, the human brain is just irreplaceable. If someday made possible and our brains can be fused with technology, this shouldn't be seen as making the mind obsolete, but as upgrading the human brain. Surely technology is amazing, but one cannot really compare any artificial intelligence to how fast and dynamic the human brain is. There's something about human brains and the connections it forges and the emotion it displays that cannot be replaced by robots and tools. So the next time someone panics about being replaced by a robot, remind them of how powerful their mind actually is. In conclusion, our brains help us understand a lot of things in the world, and in turn we should also appreciate it from time to time. By understanding how our minds process information, develop decisions and help us in our daily lives, we can feel better about learning new things and cultivating our knowledge. Are you impressed by how your brain works? What amazes you about it? Tell me in the comments section. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.